My name is Todd Knapp. I am the founder and CEO of Envision Technology Advisors. With me, I have two folks that I rely on very heavily for my own business, um, Kelly O'Shea from Creative Services and Christine Scarafani from KLR. Distributed workforce, having a portion of our employees be remote. Um, one, how widespread do you think that's going to be when all this is said and done? I think it'll be really widespread. I think we're not, um, I think in a lot of ways, companies have um, proven that you can work remote and still be successful. You, your talent pool, I think, is a lot wider than what it was before. We've proven that we can work at home, be productive and successful. So I think it's actually going to open up the whole, you know, U.S. and global for us to hire people. You know, let, let's talk about um, what you think the general attitude of employees that were furloughed will be when they go to be rehired. I think a lot of how that individual feels is the messaging, that you're staying in touch with that individual, you know, constantly communicating with them so they don't feel isolated, they don't feel like they were disposable. I think respect, right, for the individual is important. I think, as you said, it's really important to keep that communication line open, let them know what you're doing, and let them know where the firm's going, where the company's going. Clearly, across, you know, the 30 plus million unemployed people, there are going to be some folks that aren't so happy about how things were handled. Um, on this call, there might be companies who didn't handle things as well as they might have liked. Um, how do they manage that risk? I think one thing that companies really need to be aware of is there's going to be a lot of competition. You want to make sure, what do your policies look like today? We have to look at the talent that didn't get laid off, that didn't get furloughed. They might have that survivor guilt. And from an employer's perspective, try to protect against that. So let our employees that we still have or that we've brought back, let them know how much we value them. What do you guys think the differentiators will be for businesses that are trying to hire? Why would an employee want to come to one company over another? Is what they're looking for going to change as a result of this? So yes, and some of this I think is, is generational too, right? I think there's going to be kind of a divide, right? Those people that can adapt a little bit to the technology and those people that, that can't. And in particular, in a remote kind of remotely dispersed workforce, that is sort of the threshold they need to know how to use technology, but we also have to be able to use those tools. So we've got a question that says, any suggestions or options to replicate job shadowing? You can definitely do some sort of a simulation, or you can put together, um, similar to a, a Spark Hire video, where they need to respond to set questions on, you know, again, behavioral related, how would you handle this type of situation? You can also ask them, and this is sort of, you know, I'd say old school, but um, portfolios. People used to put together what they did. Let's talk about personality profiling, skills assessment, and BCIs for just a moment. You know, I've, I've heard people say, well, if someone's gonna work remote, then I don't have as, as much obligation, right? Well, I would argue otherwise, because you're still going to give this person all the keys to your kingdom. Christine, what kind of tools have you used to try and get to the intangibles about an employee, the things that they don't tell you? Currently, I'm using predictive index assessment. So we do the behavioral assessment. And for higher level positions, we do the cognitive assessment. Somebody asked, with regard to social media, do you recommend that an employer is looking at somebody's social media. Is that a good idea or a bad idea, pros and cons? Absolutely. You represent the firm. The, you know, you are the company. They're going to look, a company's going to look at your social media profile. Unfortunately, they're going to see how you represent yourself. And it is about, you know, our culture and how you fit into our culture. But you have to be careful legally because people have the right to say what they want to say. One of the things you want to be careful of from an employer perspective is you might see, you know, some protected class information. I think all of our jobs as managers, as business owners, especially as HR professionals um, are changed dramatically as a result of this. I think the skill set that defines an HR professional is really different 
now than it was six weeks ago. We have had to really become um, business partners and understand what's going on with the business as well as what's going on with our employees. This is the time to sort of dust off that workplace uh, uh, violence preparedness policy and how does that adapt to this post-COVID world with social distancing and remote workers and really retrofit that so that you know you're not when this first instance comes up you're not trying to figure it out on the fly. You should have a voice in the conversation and a seat at the table when it comes to the design of the technology in your firms. So I believe that one of the things that companies are going to do that will differentiate them and that will help them retain employees is going to be to have a program that supports bring your own office.